Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, I want to do a review, but this isn't going to be a typical review. Normally, I review Linux distributions, laptops, desktops, even servers, but today I have this gadget right here, which is a Tiny Pilot KVM, and I'm really excited to check this out because I was looking for a KVM, and now I have one right here in my hands ready to go. And this is a Raspberry Pi based KVM. It's really awesome. And we're going to check it out right now. So, what exactly is the Tiny Pilot KVM? According to the website, it claims to be an easy to use, low cost device to manage your servers. In other words, it's a device you can use to see what's on your display, and it gives you the ability to interact with your server remotely. And I've been thinking about looking into a KVM for a while now, and I recently became aware of the Tiny Pilot KVM when the creator reached out to me and offered to send a review unit to the studio. So I figured I'd check it out. And even though the unit was provided to me by the creator, the opinions that I'm expressing in this video are my own, and as always, I retain full creative control over the content on this video and all others. Anyway, when I unpacked everything, I was a bit overwhelmed by all the various cables and things that it came with. And what you see on the screen right now is what you'd get if you were to order one for yourself. Thankfully, the instructions it came with that go over how to set it up were very clear and easy to follow. The Tiny Pilot is built from a Raspberry Pi and a 3D printed case. The usual ports are exposed, just like with any other Pi device. On one of the sides, you can see the Tiny Pilot logo printed on it, which is pretty cool. And then on the back, the usual USB and Ethernet ports of the Pi are exposed, along with an added HDMI port on top. On the other side, the slot for the SD card is exposed, so you can easily remove the SD card to make a backup of it for safekeeping. And even though it comes with a lot of cables, setting it up is not as difficult as it looks. So let's take a look at where all those cables go and how to plug in everything. First of all, on one side of the Tiny Pilot KVM, you have a full sized HDMI port. And this is HDMI input, not output. So this is where you plug in the HDMI cable that comes from the device that you want to monitor. Since it's a network KVM, the next thing you do is plug in an Ethernet cable into the RJ45 jack. And this is what allows you to connect to the web console of the device. The kit comes with two USB cables, and you plug in one of those cables into the device that you want to monitor, basically your server, and the other end of that cable goes into the power connector of the Tiny Pilot KVM, and you plug that into the port that is marked data. The second USB cable also plugs into the power connector, this time into the port marked power, and the other end of that cable goes into your power brick, which then provides power to the Tiny Pilot KVM. With the power connector connected to the Tiny Pilot KVM, you're then able to toggle the power switch, which activates power on the device and turns it on, and then you simply wait for it to power up. After the device powers up, you should be able to access it by typing HTTP colon slash slash Tiny Pilot into the address bar of your browser from a machine that's on the same network as the KVM. The device will have a locally signed certificate, and you will need to bypass that warning in order to access the console. And when I did that, I immediately saw the display of the server inside my web browser. I didn't have to install Java, browser plugins, or anything. It just immediately worked. Now, I prefer to have authentication enabled on a solution such as this, and that was also easy to set up. After logging in, all you have to do is click on Settings, and then check the box labeled Require Username and Password. Type your desired username and password into the appropriate fields, and then click Save, and that was it. And then the next time I logged in, it prompted me for my credentials, and I was good to go. And when it comes to the interface, there's not really much to talk about. Not because it isn't useful, but because it's very simple. You can access the settings to update your authentication info, as you just saw, and you can even activate full screen mode for the display of your server as well. And the ability to shut down or reboot the device is exposed from the web console as well, so you won't need to SSH into the device in order to power it down. 
Speaking of SSH, the developer doesn't hide the internal workings of the unit from you at all. They even give you the SSH credentials on the document that comes with the unit. Following that, I had no problems accessing the device via SSH, and I even changed the default password for safe measure. So you might be curious, why would you want to use SSH to get into the device? But one reason is that you might want to enable Wake on LAN, which is a really awesome thing that you can do on the Tiny Pilot KVM. Actually, Wake on LAN is not specific to the Tiny Pilot at all. You could do that on any Raspberry Pi that's on your network. But the general idea is that if you are using your server for home lab purposes, then it might be a waste of power to keep your server running overnight when you're sleeping. Maybe you could shut it down when you go to bed and then power it on when you wake up. But if you were to purchase a Tiny Pilot KVM, then it might make sense to set up a cron job with a wake on LAN command to wake up your server in the morning around the time that you wake up so you don't have to remember to do it. And then on the server itself, you could set up a cron job to shut it down at night about the time that you go to bed, which means that with the Tiny Pilot KVM, you could actually consolidate a utility device as well that will actually wake up your server when you wake up in the morning, which will help you save power. Again, this is not specific to the Tiny Pilot KVM, but the way I see it, if you purchase a device to manage your servers, then definitely have it manage your servers, including Wake on LAN. Another thing that I really like about this solution is that it's open source. So if you are curious about how to set this up, or you might want to consider building your own, you can check out the source code and see how you can go about doing that. The fact that the source code is exposed and it's open is great. On my end, I'm more inclined to trust a device that's open source than one that isn't, so I think that's a definite win. So I'm really happy to see that the code is open source. I think that's great. So, who might benefit from such a solution? After all, a lot of servers out there have an IPMI console built in that lets you do the same thing. And not only that, you can buy used IKVMs on eBay, but a lot of those are expensive, some require licensing fees, and worse, they often require Java in your browser in order to function. This one in particular doesn't need Java or any plugins, which is awesome. It just works out of the box. There's nothing to install. You just add it to your network, connect the cables, and you're good to go. As far as whether or not this particular device will be useful to you, it all depends on what you need a KVM for. For me, my Super Micro servers have IPMI built in, so in my case, there's limited benefit there. But this solution will work great with my older Dell servers because they're too old to benefit from the HTML5 iDRAC that Dell provides, and those require Java in order for me to view the console. With enough motivation, you can get that to work, but I see something like this as being a better solution than messing with Java and lowering the security of my browser. In addition, if you decide to use a laptop as your hypervisor, similar to what I went over in my recent How to Home Lab video, the Tiny Pilot KVM can give you an IPMI style interface for your laptop that you'd normally only have with a proper server. One downside, though, is that you won't be able to boot your server from an ISO image with this device, at least not yet. I've heard that that's being worked on, but as of today, that's not an option. And I would also prefer the ability to connect to multiple servers from one Tiny Pilot KVM, but that currently isn't a possibility yet either. So if you only have one server, then this is a great fit. But even if you don't have a server, there's other use cases for this device as well. For example, you could set up a remotely available workstation that you can access over the network. So, I have to admit, I'm very impressed with the Tiny Pilot KVM. At first, I was a little nervous to review it because what if I hated it? And let's be honest, Raspberry Pi projects are often hit or miss. Some of them, like this one, are amazing. They work well out of the box, and it's just an overall win. But others are, well, the opposite of that. In fact, this device was even easier to set up than I thought it could be. The most work that I had to do was log into my PFSense firewall and set up a static lease for the IP for this device, and that was essentially it. It was very easy to set up, and... Well, it works great. And this device does exactly what it advertises to do. It gives you a console to your server. And when it comes to home lab, especially, that's extremely awesome. 
but I can see this working in small and medium business as well. Now, I'd prefer to have a device that is able to connect to multiple servers. That's the only complaint that I could come up with here. But this is an awesome device, and it is an option that I recommend that you consider if you are looking for a KVM for your home lab. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I will see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.